had an opportunity to sit down with Dr. Jeff Birdsong to talk about some of the things the college is involved with around what, what is now the former city of Pitcher. Uh, Dr. Jeff Birdsong, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Uh, Jeff, you know, we talk about Pitcher, Oklahoma, and uh, recently the city itself basically abandoned its original site. But it's not gone, is it? No, we still have records, certainly, of the city of Pitcher. We're going to uh, try to collect as best we can the memories and uh, the material that we have from the city of Pitcher and then also from the mining era of Pitcher as well. That process was started by a gift, That's a correct. gift by the city of Pitcher. Can you talk to us about that gift? Well, it was, uh, I believe, $578,000, and it was there to help the uh, college preserve the records of any of uh, pitcher and also to provide scholarships for uh, people who have uh, family members from the city of pitcher one of the largest uh, gifts given to the college in recent memory this is quite uh, an opportunity for neo to continue on with the memory of pitcher right so what we're having what we're doing right now is we're uh, the college the library is scanning all the city records from pitcher uh, this has been quite a task from our librarians, uh, Alberta Hutchings and Slow Brown are the ones who are ma mainly involved in doing this. And what they're doing is first categorizing all the material. And once they categorize, and I think they've come up with about 13 different categories from the different uh, material from the city of Pitcher. And then they're going through the scanning process. And this will take, uh, Sloan informed me, and she's the director of the library, she informed me that it will probably take about two years to do all that. So what you're basically saying is, is you're, you're starting to make an electronic copy of all of the hard copy materials that have been given to you. What are you going to do with the hard copy stuff? Well, we're going to have some place for storage. Uh, perhaps eventually what we'll do is have a museum where we can have a vault in that museum that we can store the hard copies, the original copies of the material. We would have the rest of it electronically preserved for people to go and access when they want to do research. Will the general public be able to access this information? Certainly, yeah. That's a great thing. Now, the other part of this gift was scholarships, and that's the Carolyn Elmore Scholarship Fund. That's got to be an exciting addition to the college. Absolutely. I think this is a way of just, once again, helping to preserve the memory of Pitcher. Uh, we should also point out that this is really extended to an area that I think we can collectively call Northern Ottawa County, and we're looking then at Zinkville, um, Hawkerville, Cardin, um, many of those towns in that area. And people, you know, when people think about Pitcher, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. it had much more of an influence on the entire area of the mining community, reaching all the way up to Kansas and beyond. Sure. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about City of Pitcher and, and maintaining the memory of it, you're maintaining the memory of Northern Ottawa County. Right. I think that for for some people, and there's certainly many people that live in this area that are very well informed and know about the history, but this was the largest lead and zinc mine in the world. Uh, it was then extremely important for providing munitions for both World War I and World War II. Uh, it helped to make Pitcher a, a city of about 20 or 30,000 people, employed over 10,000 miners at one time in that area. And so it was a very significant operation. So you have to categorize before you can scan. Right. So that's the first step in the process of preserving the memory of these mining operations. Correct. Well, this is really looking at the city of Pitcher. The city of Pitcher. So you would have categories dealing with city hall, you would have categories dealing with uh, the streets and, and electricity and all those different areas. Then you have to scan it all in and save it. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of material to say. That is a lot of material. We have to, uh, you know, be forward thinking about what kind of uh, hardware we have to save that material, and at this point, we're prepared to do so. You mentioned that there's a possibility of a museum on the horizon to uh, store some of this material. Uh, what kind of museum do you have in mind? Well, we actually have worked on this uh, collectively with others. Uh, we have something called the uh, committee, referred to as the Pitcher. Uh, municipal Mining Collection Committee, and we had our first meeting and we just kind of talked about the possibility of developing this into a museum, and that's a ways off for sure, but in my view, I think that what museums do is provide both 
academic opportunities, but also uh, sentimental value as well. And I think people would be coming to the museum for both reasons. After all, if this was the largest lead and zinc minefield in the world, there's plenty of reasons to study this area. Uh, think about the environmental impact of the area as well. So there's some academic reasons. The birth and death of a city, another good academic reason. But then the sentimental reasons, the people who live there and want to be able to uh, capture those memories once again, and that's what a museum can do. So I look at it as an academic uh, exercise, also for sentimental value. I think another area, though, kind of an area for interaction, uh, possibility for the museum, is to see how you can help people remember or maybe for the first time learn how much work was involved in being a miner, the physical labor of being a miner. And uh, there's not too many jobs left in the world today, at least here in the United States, where we see that kind of uh, physical labor. And I think for young people especially, it would be important to be able to, to know about that. And um, you know, to know that where we are today as a country with whatever good and bad things that we may have, overall mainly good things, uh, we didn't get into this stage without uh, some people working really hard before us. And certainly one of the groups that did that were the miners. And when we look at uh, like the veterans of World War II today, mm -hmm. yeah. many of them are passing on. Our, our heroes are passing on because you know, they come to that age in their generation, we're losing that generation. Mm -hmm. Many of those uh, veterans have turned around and they've recorded their stories. Mm -hmm. They've taken interviews on TV from multiple different types of venues, from documentaries for the History Channel and so on and so forth. You want to do the same thing for the miners, don't you? Sure do. Uh, not just for the miners, especially the miners, but also people who were related to the miners who lived in that area. And uh, we are wanting to develop, we are in the process of developing an oral history project. And what will happen in that case is I would want people to contact me and set up times for interviews. This is an opportunity for our students, our faculty members here on campus to work in the process of collecting oral histories. But we also want that and so that's for us to learn how best to conduct these interviews and to collect this information. But then also for uh, those who worked in the mines or who lived in this area to share their memories. The miners definitely have stories to tell. Any, sure. if, if you've ever attended the miners' reunion, yeah. uh, they'll they'll you know move off into a corner, a little group of them, and they'll start talking about what happened here or there. And there's lots of things when they were holding the miners' reunions in Pitcher, lots of things reminded them of those stories and brought back lots of memories. It would be really, really fantastic to be able to capture many, many of those stories on audio tape or even video for the museum, for future history, for, for, for future historians to turn around and study that particular material. It's a language all of its own. Sure, yeah, I've already gone through that experience in some ways, Mark. Some people have said, I really don't know if I want to participate because no one would really understand the words that I'm using. And that's, of course, precisely the reason why we would want people to participate. Absolutely, I don't know what terminology they use when they work in the mine. They do, and if they don't share that with other people, then we'll forget what that terminology was. I remember watching um, which we have over in the Miami Public Library, a video of the miners. It's, uh, most of it is a silent film. And I thought to myself when I was watching that, almost every action that those miners are doing and the tools that they're using, I have no idea. There's a different word for it. There has to be a different word for it, and I don't know that word. And if I, were, if I was to listen to those guys talk, I probably wouldn't know what they're talking about. But that's the reason for having those oral histories, to preserve that time in our history. A great time to be around. Now, if uh, people want to contact you, mm -hmm. if they have a loved one or they themselves would like to interview and uh, put their memories on basically the archive forever, mm -hmm. how could they contact you? Well, um, I'm located on the third floor of Shipley Hall. 317 is my office. Uh, they can call me at 918-540-6348, or they can email me at jbirdsong, that's B-I-R-D-S-O-N-G, at neo.edu. It's a great opportunity to get the, me the memories put into history forever. Mm -hmm. And with today's electronic age, people from all over the world will have the opportunity to hear those, me those messages right. and memories. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to add? Well, 
Also, I would uh, just point out that if you have materials that you would like to donate to NEO, we want to be a, um, uh, known as a repository for material from not only Pitcher, but again, Northern Ottawa County. So if you have material regarding schools uh, from those, uh, those sit communities, uh, certainly pictures uh, from those communities, material about the mines, we would like to uh, at least have the opportunity to look it over and see if that's worth uh, our collection. And more than likely, it would be worth our collection at this point. We're just beginning. Uh, we have already had uh, donated to uh, NEO the, uh, many of the uh, trophies from the high school and junior high, picture high school and junior high, their athletic trophies. And those were donated to us from a man named uh, Mr. Freitas Cook, who first received that material from Baxter Museum. So uh, that material is out there, and we would like to hopefully be the place that uh, all that material will ultimately end up, most of it will. If you put together a museum, the Northern Ottawa County Museum, that, that works with this area, that highlights many of the events that have taken place in Northeast Oklahoma, mm -hmm. the mining tools, some of the personal tools that uh, the miners used, they're, you know, they're not available anymore no. these days. So, so any of those materials, mm -hmm. uh, any of the uniforms they may have worn, Absolutely. any type of artifacts that can show people how the miners lived during the time uh, of picking out the zinc and lead and everything else right. from underground, sure. you know, the hats, the lamps, anything of that nature being preserved into the museum would be a great asset for Northeast Oklahoma. That's true. And uh, I, I think many people, again, know this, uh, but here we are at Northeastern Oklahoma a and College, and this college started off as the Mayan School of Mines. So that's where this college first first started in its history. And so this is a way, again, of being the collective point for that history of mining here at NEO a and It's only fitting and appropriate that Northeastern Oklahoma a and College, the School of Mines, right. is now the one that that uh, watches over mm -hmm. Northeast Oklahoma, the Pitcher area, and Northern Ottawa County's mining operations. That's certainly the way I think about it, and I think uh, many other people do as well. Dr. Jeff Birdsong, thanks for joining us today. Sure.